The Niners can wrap up the NFC West, their first division title since 2019. They represented the NFC in the Super Bowl that year, if you remember. They got to sweep the Seahawks, something they haven't done in like a decade. James Palmer live Lumen Field in Seattle. Mark Ross with me as well. Happy game day to you both. It's all about Brock Purdy tonight. James will look at the shiny object, the new shiny object, and he'd do it again like he did this past Sunday. Also, he's dealing with an oblique injury. We think he's good to go tonight, right? Yeah, we do, Andrew. My understanding is with that oblique, that rib injury, it's a short week. He is expected to be the starting quarterback for the 49ers in this game. I've talked to players over the last couple of days from both teams. Nobody really talked about him not playing in this game. They all expected him to go out and do that, and he's going to do it tonight. And we know it's a small sample size, right? But over the last two games of the 20 quarterbacks that have thrown 50 or more passes, he's top five in completion percentage, touchdown passes, and passer rating. Now, we've been hearing that everybody in that 49ers locker room expected this and I talked to fullback Kyle Juszczyk this week and he told me we didn't see it during camp because we had to give Trey Lance so many reps to get him ready when we did see it was during those preseason games where we saw that savviness that knack he said I don't really know how to put my finger on it he's just a football player he has that sense of just how to understand everything about the game he told me that's what makes him a little more mobile than you believe he is because he sees the field so well and you also see the football IQ Juszczyk told me that he has Kyle Shanahan allowing him to throw the football so early in that game against Tampa, allowing him to go up tempo before the end of the half and going with that hard count, all the things that you do, maybe not in a guy's first start. And the other part about it is, Mark, that they allowed him to go out there and run the entire scale of this offense, but is surrounded by so many skilled players, it takes some of the pressure off him, especially, Andrew, when you run for over 200 yards a season high in that start. It helps out your quarterback as well. Yeah, it would help out if they could do that tonight. And the Seahawks run defense has been a major topic of conversation there in Seattle as they're giving up 225 a game on the ground the last three weeks. They should have Kenneth Walker. The Seahawks should tonight. He is off the injury report which Mark Ross should obviously help Geno Smith who threw multiple picks last week for the first time in checks notes 22 starts since week eight of 2014 when he was a jet seems like five lifetimes ago yeah talking about a sample size there look Geno Smith has had a fantastic season a pro bowl type season but the last few games he's been struggling as you mentioned two interceptions last week four interceptions in his last three games maybe pressing a little bit especially with Kenneth Walker out out there they only had 28 yards rushing last week in the loss to the Panthers by their running backs and even in the first game against San Francisco the Gino only threw for 197 yards and Kenneth Walker only had 10 yards rushing before his emergence but these are the games that Gino really has to prove and show he's the guy prime time San Fran best D in the league playing for the division title. This is when Gino really has to step up and say, okay, last couple games are bad, but now I can raise my game to another level. We know they might not get much from their run defense. We know they might not get much from the D if this turns into a game where they have to really score, which, which Seattle has shown they can do. Gino's shown he can put up points, but this is really where he, Kenneth Walker or not, definitely will help. But Gino really has to raise his level. Definitely cannot turn the ball over tonight against that San Francisco defense but really has to step his game up and show that he's the guy, Andrew. Only one team has made the playoffs through 14 weeks. That's the Eagles. The Niners can become number two tonight if they can sweep the Seahawks for the first time since 2011 when Jim Harbaugh was the head coach. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, James. Both coming back a little bit later. That's tonight's game. How about Saturday football? May I interest you in nine consecutive hours on the couch on Saturday? Oh, it's going to be glorious. The Colts, the Vikings in the early game live on NFL Network, the Ravens and the Browns in the middle game. It's going to be cold. It's going to be really cold. Dolphins, Bills, 8 p.m. Eastern live. NFL Network live. NFL Plus. AFC playoff picture looks like this heading into that late game. Have the Bills as the one seed going for their third consecutive division title at 10 and 3. The Dolphins eight and five right now in a wild card spot. If you have not heard, there is another big snowstorm forecasted for Buffalo Saturday. Could be snowing, could could rain, I don't know. Um, you know, and like 
I, I think it's, for, for me at least, I, I can speak for myself, that it's a mindset thing, uh, really. Um, and if I'm too focused and worried about, you know, is it too cold? Is it, can I, can I really grab the ball? Can I not? Like, then, I, you know, I would say I'm focused on the wrong things. Um, Doing so before? Yeah, it snowed in Alabama my first year. Yeah. So it snows in Alabama, guys. <laughs> Sure. Uh, Cam Wolf and uh, Brian Balding with me. I did look it up. Uh, last January, it did snow again. I believe that's the most recent snow in and around Tuscaloosa, too. Obviously, was gone at that point. About an inch in, in the northern Tuscaloosa suburbs. Cam, uh, we're looking at 27 and snow. Some forecasts say like seven, eight, nine inches by Saturday night. That's a lot for the Dolphins. Yeah, Andrew, not Tuscaloosa. Well, Wednesday uh, in their indoor practice facility, the Dolphins cranked their AC as low as it could go. It felt like <laughs> high 50s, low 60s to me. Not quite Buffalo temperatures, as Buffalo folks will tell you, but better than the 80 degrees it currently is out there in Miami. Their coach, Mike McDaniel, was strutting around with the I wish it were colder T-shirt, a nod to their I wish it were hotter T-shirts they wore early in the season in Miami. But the reality is it will be cold and snowy and windy on Sunday. National Weather Service is saying up to nine inches of snow in the Buffalo area this weekend. Wind and cold this summer. And Tua and McDaniel have both used this mindset term as something the cold is only going to be what you will let it be. Well, I must not get that mindset when I get sent in the cold for game day morning because I feel the cold certainly. And the reality is for Tua, some of his worst games as a pro have come in cold weather. Last January against the Titans, cold and rainy, was probably his worst game as a pro. And he mentioned that he went to Maryland with his brother this offseason to throw up there, 20s and snowing. And he said to get prepped for games like this one. Buffalo folks will tell you, Maryland nor Alabama are not Buffalo. And, Baldy, one more thing beyond the weather that I'm watching is how they respond to their recent struggles. Talking with people here in the building, one thing to expect, Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson being more active, not only in the run game in the cold, but also in the pass game. If you watch that tape, there's a lot of flat throws that, that Tua did not hit that were open because they were trying to push the ball down the field and in the intermediate uh, in the middle of the field. And I asked Tua about that, and he mentioned to me that early in the season, a lot of their progressions were deep first, and they were wide open, and so they never had to go to the running back. Now, this week, we're focused on taking those gimmies, and so look for the running backs to be active. Yeah, and, and listen, the cold and the snow does affect both teams. And for all the cold and the snow games this year, both coaches, or rather this week, both coaches have pointed that out. Um, here's how the, the Bills are getting ready for it. They're used to it, sure, but it's not as if they go out there, you know, with bare, bare arms every day. That's Shaq Lawson, Baldy. I mean, he looks like he's ready, ready for a blizzard. I don't think you're allowed to, to play in that, but whatever. He's one of the guys that's going to be chasing Tua. And, and, and there's, there's a lot of tape now the last couple of weeks on how to shut down this Miami offense. Well, to Tua's point, Andrew, if he's focused on the cold, he's not going to be focusing on this Buffalo Bills defense. Mine is Von Miller, but Tredavious White is back. And I got to tell you, studying the tape of Buffalo these last few weeks, they do a lot. They used to be just kind of primarily a zone team, but they're not anymore. And it really stops to start, you know, stopping the run. Like, you're going to get an eight-man front if you get a tight end, a fullback, two tight ends, and you're going to get penetration. They're not a big defense. You're going to get Ed Oliver coming inside and Jones, and they're going to knock off these Jets, you know, pullers right here and really not let Bam Knight even get back to the line of scrimmage. When you want to throw it, though, they're going to give you a lot. You're going to go to four wide receiver sets, as Miami is prone to do. You're going to get, you could get, a cover three right here, three deep, underneath. You know, you're going to get the flats like covered like Matt Milano is right here in the passing lane. They're going to just going to take the zones away and shrink the field. But they do more than that. If they want to blitz you because maybe there's no Von Miller. Maybe they want extra pressure. So they run a fire zone right here. Trey Edmonds right here along with Matt Milano come. They're going to play sticky man coverage with Tredavious White, DeMar Hanlon, uh, Taron Johnson. Those are the guys responsible for manning up. But here's that same blitz right here. Like Edmonds is going first and he's going to get picked up by the back. But here comes Matt Milano. And I got to tell you, when quarterbacks get hit in the solar plexus like this, it affects you. It affects the throw and affects you going forward in the game. And then they can do this, Andrew. They can play 
man to man up top like they do right here with Taron Johnson and Tredavious White, sticky man coverage, but down below they can play zone. But you don't know that until the ball is snapped. So they're going to hide it and disguise it for Tua up until the ball is snapped. And then they can do this. They can just throw flat junk at you. And they can put a lot up there, actually only rush three, make you hold the ball. And now they got a rat there in the middle of the field, Matt Milano. They got man coverage. They got a free safety. They got a lot of extra guys right there to really foul the eyes of Tua and those receivers, Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. Uh, they better be doing their homework on this defense because they do a lot and they do it well. Yeah, and they're able to get pressure, obviously, with only four, and they had been able to do that, especially last week, mixing up those coverages without Von Miller. We'll talk to left tackle Deion Dawkins, other side of the ball, obviously, coming up next hour. Thank you, Baldy. Thank you, Cam. Should be good, and dress warmly for that one. Let's get in our insiders who are now back in their respective home cams after the trip to Irving and the owners meeting, Ian Rappaport and Mike Garofolo. Good to see you both. Ian, start with you. News that broke at the end of the meetings yesterday. News out of Arizona. A leave of absence for Steve Keim. What do we know about this? An indefinite health-related leave of absence for general manager Steve Keim, a situation that has been developing really over the course of the last several weeks and several months for the Arizona Cardinals. He steps away, no timetable for his return, obviously, for the Arizona Cardinals. It has been it has been a lot this season. On the field, uh, we had DeAndre Hopkins suspension. You had Kyler Murray's torn ACL off the field. This situation with Steve Keim, obviously, is one. You had an assistant coach fired after an incident in Mexico. The record is not good. It has been an absolutely trying season for the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, and for Kime, obviously, as, as part of this, received an extension before the season. Remains to be seen when he will be back with the team. Future certainly in doubt there. We will see up in the air. I would say we'll see when and if he ends up coming back. In the meantime, two of his top lieutenants, two really well-respected guys in the organization, Adrian Wilson, the VP of Pro Personnel, and Quentin Harris, the VP of Player Personnel, are going to split his duties on an interim basis. All right. In the meantime, the Cardinals are in Denver this coming Sunday. Colt McCoy's going to go for the Cardinals. Russell Wilson's still in the concussion protocol. Mike, speaking of quarterbacks and concussion protocol, had some news out of Baltimore a couple of minutes ago. That's right. Tyler Huntley, who is now at the podium addressing reporters, is out of the concussion protocol, according to head coach John Harbaugh, who declined to name him the starter for Saturday's game against the Cleveland Browns, which you can see right here on NFL Network. Good I'll job, be covering Mike. that game. I plug both of those things every time I talk about this game. Uh, so he stopped short of naming him the starter, but... Come on, he's the starter, in large part because Lamar Jackson continues to not practice. So I know that there was a little bit of hope that Jackson would only miss one game, but it is going to be two games. We will see about his status next week. But for now, it is Tyler Huntley. Elsewhere on the quarterback front, Baker Mayfield gets the start against the Green Bay Packers. Sean McVay announcing that, which I don't know that he actually had to announce it, right? Like, well, what else did anybody expect? If Baker Mayfield could play like that on virtually no preparation, imagine what he can do when he actually gets into the playbook and learns a few things. So that is going to be the expectation with John Wolford out. It is going to be Baker Mayfield. I shouldn't say the expectation because Sean McVay flat out said it, Andrew. Uh, yep, and with Bryce Perkins as the number two quarterback as they are back in Green yep. Bay yet again. Matt LaFleur says he's not sure if he's going to face Aaron Donald, but he has to prepare just in case. All right, Ian, let's, uh, let's get to this Drew Brees thing. Uh, Drew Brees and Purdue made an announcement today. I just want to confirm, this isn't some kind of prank. We're not going to find out like an hour later it was all a social media stunt. Right. He didn't really get struck by lightning last time. Just a really stupid advertisement that I think didn't go over well with really anyone. Although I guess Brees is probably happy that he didn't actually get struck by lightning. This happens to be real. Drew Brees is joining the Purdue staff as an assistant coach on an interim basis. So Brees is going to step in there, work with the team in their preparations for the uh, Cheez-It Citrus Bowl, which is a real thing. Uh, they're going to play LSU. He's going to step in and help with the quarterback position. And it sounds like they probably do need a little help with Aiden O'Connell, uh, their starting quarterback, opting today to forgo uh, playing in the game. He is going to declare his intentions to enter the NFL draft. Probably a third-round pick, one of the more underrated college prospects. Not going to be with Purdue, so Breeze is going to have to get to work on 
the next quarterback. Okay, but he has exhausted eligibility even with the NIL thing. Now he can't come back and play because he has turned pro. So Drew Brees coming back and Aiden O'Connell. Mm, uh, right. right. And but does does citrus go with cheese? It's the that's cheese what I'm wondering. It's citrus yeah. bowl. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't love Cheez Its anyway. Uh, I hope they're not a sponsor. Not really. Not really my thing. I'm more of like a awesome. Pez Gobstopper kind of guy. Ugh, Cheez Its are not good. Citrus is good. Clementines are good. I like those. I like Clementines as well. It's a great late night snack.